the spinal cord gets damaged in its upper motor. But with the spinal cord as itself, you have upper motor and lower motor as well. Okay? So first of all, let's talk about the corticospinal tract. So where does it originate? It originates from the motor cortex. Okay? Corticospinal tract. Corticospinal tract is motor. So it starts from the motor cortex, goes down towards the spinal cord. Okay? I don't have the figure because I didn't know how to teach. So I'll just keep telling you. Anyway, <clears throat> it starts from the motor cortex. I'll show you here my book. Okay. And this is the midbrain, pons, medulla and the spinal cord. Can you guys see? Huh? So, it starts from the motor cortex, goes down to the midbrain. There is no crossing over at the midbrain. Goes to the pons, no, cro no crossing over at the pons. No cross... But when it reaches the medulla, below the medulla you have a crossing over. Where? To the opposite side. Okay? Which goes to the spinal cord. And from the spinal cord, it divides into lateral and anterior cortical spinal tracts. So you have lateral here, which is this one. And then you have anterior here. Okay? Anterior cortical spinal tract is 20% of the nerves. And this is? 70% or 80%. Okay? So do you understand? Just below the medulla, the corticospinal tract crosses. So, now think. If there is damage to the cortex, obviously, because there is a crossing over, not your, suppose if your right motor cortex get damaged, your left, left muscles will be affected. Okay? If it's the left, your right will be affected. Why? Because there is a crossing over. In this they are only showing from the right side. But imagine the left side. So here it would be like two crosses. Do you understand? Just below the medulla there will be two crosses. So it's just showing the right side. Do you understand? Okay. Now, so anything above the medulla, if it gets damaged, it would, uh, sorry, anything above the medulla would be on the opposite side. But if it's the spinal cord, it is a different story, which I'll talk to you about later. So that is the corticospinal tract. And this corticospinal tract, as it's in the pons and the medulla, you know the medulla and the pons also as nuclei of the cranial nerves. Mm -hmm. So nuclei, uh, cranial nerves, some of them are also involved in motor function, right? Mm -hmm. So it supplies some fibers. The corticospinal tract supplies some fibers to the nuclei of the cranial nerves. That is how your motor function of the cranial nerves take place. Do you understand? Okay. That's what Alvaro was talking about. Now, uh, sensory. Okay. How many tracts do we have in sensory? The spinal thalamic tract, then you have dorsal coronal tract and dorsal and ventral spino cerebellar pathway. And it involves the cerebellum. So, spinal thalamic tract which is here and here. Spirothalamic tract is involved in which kind of sensation? Temperature and pain. Dorsal spinal tract is involved in? Dorsal column is involved in? Proprioception. So two point sensation. Joint proprioception. And dorsal and ventral spinothalamic, the spinocerebellar tract is involved in? Unconscious proprioception. Okay? So if there is any damage to the spinocerebellar tract, you will have sensory ataxia. Okay? Because it's involved in unconscious, the way you stand, this is unconscious proprioception. Okay? This is all controlled by the cerebellum. Okay? So you have an idea now, right? Now, spinothalamic tract, the sensation comes from which root of the spinal cord? From the posterior. Posterior. So this is the dorsal root ganglia, which is involved in sensation. So the, the touch is from, from the skin to the brain. Motor is from the brain to the muscle. Okay? So sensation originates, first, the first neuron is from the, from the nerves, from the, your peripheral nerves. So it comes, the sensation comes from here, enters into the posterior or the posterior spinal root into the dorsal root column, into the posterior horn. Then what happens? It crosses over here. 
it crosses over at the level of the spinal cord. Okay, this does not cross. Spinothalamic tract does not cross over in the medulla or in the somewhere in the brain. It always crosses opposite side in the spinal cord itself. So you can imagine it will cross like this. Okay? And then it goes up directly to your parietal cortex. Okay? Do you understand? But dorsal column which is responsible for discrimination and for perception and all comes through this area, goes to the cuneatus and the, you know, the grasses and all that. It doesn't cross here. It goes up and crosses at the medulla. At the medulla. In inaccurate fibers. Anyway, forget about it. Anyway, it crosses over in the medulla. So if there is any damage to the spinal cord, the spinal thalamic tract, if it's involved, obviously it will be involved. If there is any damage to the spinal cord, then opposite side you will lose pain and temperature sensation. Okay? Depending on the lesion. But your proprioception of the same side will be lost. Do you understand? Proprioception will be lost on the same side because there is no crossing over in the spinal cord. Where does it cross? It crosses in the medulla. So till then, this, no, this pathway is carrying sensation of the same side. Okay? But spinal thalamic tract, before it enters into the medulla, it crosses over in the spinal cord. So, if there is any damage to the spinal cord, you will lose pain and temperature of the opposite side. If there is, suppose a tumor from the side, if it damages, for example, this left side, because it has crossed over, you will lose pay and temperature of the opposite side. But here, dorsal column, you will lose of the same, uh, same region. You understand? So the person cannot feel discrimination or two point discrimination on the same side of the lesion, same side of the lesion, and cannot feel pain and temperature of the opposite side because it has crossed over. You understand? Because the tumor is on this, I can't tell you. Lateral spinal thalamic tract comes like this and crosses here, right? So any damage here, because it has crossed over, the opposite side is not having any sensation of pain or temperature. Do you understand? I'm trying to make this understand. Yeah? You don't understand. Okay, lateral spinal thalamic tract. This is the only tract that crosses over in the spinal cord. Okay? This is the only tract that crosses over in the spinal cord. Because we have lateral spinal thalamic and dorsal column. There are two sensory pathways. Okay? Dorsal columns, they don't cross over in the spinal cord, but they cross over in the medulla. So if there is any damage to the medulla, then your opposite side would get damaged. Uh, opposite... Uh, side of proprioception and discrimination will get damaged. Okay? But spinal thalamic tract, because it's already crossing over in the spinal cord, any damage to one side, for example, will cause any lesion in one side will cause damage to the opposite side. You understand? It's like the motor cortex. Motor cortex decusates at the medulla. So if you damage the area below the medulla, Maybe same side. the same side. same side will be affected. You understand? That is why crossing over is very important to know. So spinal thalamic tract crosses over. And in, suppose if there was uh, an infarction here, for example, I would lose my pain and temperature of this side. Okay? And my... Uh, the dorsal column would be on the same side because it will only cross over in the medulla. Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay. You understand? Okay. So, these are my questions that I know. Okay. So, now the lesion within the spinal cord can either be extra medullary, that is outside the spinal cord, so it can be here somewhere, or it can be within the spinal cord. Then you have intradural, extra dural. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, extra medulla, root. What do I mean by root? Root, I mean the spinal nerves. Okay, so if we damage the spinal nerve, it is a 
lower motor neuron damage. It's a peripheral paralysis. Okay? At the level of the spinal cord. But below the spinal cord, it is upper motor neuron. I'll tell you that later. Segmental means what I was talking about. Within the spinal cord. Discrimination is lost on the same side. Pin prick and temperature is lost on the opposite side. Pin prick and temperature, or pin prick I mean pain. Pain and temperature is lost on the opposite side. Discrimination is lost on the same side. So, what do I mean by at the level of spinal cord, lower motor neuron sensory level? At the level of the spinal cord, I mean, for example, if this was, for example, T1, okay, this is T1 spinal. Uh, Area. So what happens is, as you all know, the corticospinal tract comes right down to the spinal cord, isn't it? And it supplies the motor, whatever muscle T1 is supplying. So, what is lower motor neuron damage? What is motor new, more, lower motor neuron lesion? The nerves. Okay. So here, the nerves. Because this, only this, only this spinal cord is getting damaged, not the upper or the lower or whatever. Only that T1 is getting damaged. Only T1 is getting damaged. So, it is lower motor neuron in this area. Do you understand? But imagine, all these corticospinal tract has to go through all the spinal cords. So, in T2, it does not receive the corticospinal tract. So it is like the brain is damaged. Okay? So from T2 onwards, it would be like an upper motor neuron lesion. The features would be upper motor neuron. But at the level of T1, it would be lower motor neuron. Do you understand? No. This is the... Spinal cord is a part of your central nervous system. Yeah. Know that. Okay? Okay, this is the muscle. This is the muscle. Okay, T1. Or let's say C5. C5 means what? Cervical? Spine number 5. Okay? Yes. <laughs> so, any damage here would be lower motor neuron. Okay? Any damage in the brain to the spinal cord would be upper motor neuron. Okay? What is root? This is getting damaged. Do you understand now? Yeah. But this is only at level C5. C5 only supplies, for example, one muscle. Or what about the rest of the muscle? There are other Levels below, there is C6, C, C7, C8, T1, T1, all those will not receive this corticospinal tract because there is a damage here. Mm -hmm. How will it receive? If there is a damage in this one, it's like it would be a lower motor neuron lesion for this muscle solely. Only for this muscle, it would be a lower motor neuron lesion. Mm -hmm. But for the lower levels, this corticospinal tract fails to go to the other levels. So, anything below that, it would seem like a damage to the central nervous system. So, that would be upper motor neuron below C5. Now, do you guys understand? Huh? Again, I'll repeat. Cortical spinal tract it originates from the brain, goes down to the spinal cord and then you know, supplies the muscle. So, if suppose for example, let's give another example. T12. At the level of T12, if there is any damage to the, if suppose for example there is a tumor, okay, tumor at the spinal cord, and that tumor is affecting this area. So, at this level, it's not supplying the muscles which is supposed to be supplied by T12. So, it, it, the the upper part, that is the the tract from the brain to the spinal cord is normal. But the tract from the spinal cord to the muscle is damaged. So it is lower motor neuron. Do you understand? Only for T12. Only at that level. 
but below that it's not receiving any fibers from the corticospinal tract. So it is like the brain is damaged or it is like something is wrong with the old corticospinal tract. So anything below T12 which would be what? What is below T12? L1, L2, all those will be like upper motor. Okay, so this so these lesions that is below, that is why it's difficult to find lower motor because it's only one specific level. So when you get a patient, they will look like as though they have upper motor neuron lesion because it's so, it's only one level. You understand? Okay? Now, same thing with the sensation. You have spinal salami which crosses over. And your dorsal column which goes up and crosses. So all the medulla, brain, everything is fine. But because I have a damage to T12, because it crosses over, I will have a thin prick on. So if it's a damage here, my temperature and sensation will be lost on which side? If there is a tumor here. On this side, because it's supposed to cross over, isn't it? But if I have a damage here, what will happen to my discrimination? Same side, because it is crossing over in the medulla and medulla is fine. Okay? You understand? Okay. That is what is very important. That is why below the level you will have, but below the level you will lose all, you will lose all your sensation. Why? Because there is no spinothalamic tract being formed. There is no dorsal column being formed. So everything will be you understand this? Please say if you do not understand because Can you repeat again? Yeah, okay. At the level of the spine, you want the whole thing to be repeated? Uh, from temperature, from, uh, yeah. Temperature. temperature. Pain and temperature is supplied by spinothalamic tract. Okay? How does spinothalamic tract work is? It goes through the posterior, you know, you know your spinal nerve. How many roots do you have? Two roots. Okay? One is the dorsal, one is the anterior. Anterior mainly carries motor function. And this brings in the sensory function. So, sensory function is carried by the, uh, by the spinothalamic tract. Okay? Which crosses over first in the spinal cord itself. And then you have discrimination, joint sensation. All these things is by dorsal cord, which goes directly to the posterior part of the spinal cord and goes up and crosses over in the medulla. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the spinal thalamic tract already crosses over in the spinal cord and goes up directly to the cortex. Mm -hmm. There is no crossing over thereafter. Mm -hmm. You understand? Only crosses in the spinal cord. Mm -hmm. Which one? Spinal thalamic tract. But dorsal column crosses in the medulla. Mm -hmm. So, these lateral spinal thalamic tract, for example, the right side. It brings in sensation from my right side, goes to the left side and then goes up. But dorsal column brings in from the right side and goes up to the medulla, crosses to the left and then goes up. Do you understand? Okay. So if there is any damage to the right, not right, for example, on the, uh, it depends on the lesion. Okay. So if there is, for example, damage over here, your, your, um, your suppose if a lesion is here, for example on the left side, be, because this lesion is going to compress this area, your last spinal thalamic tract is supposed to take the sensation to the opposite side and then go up, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is damaged, does it take it to the, does it take it to the opposite side? No. So, which side gets damaged? This side gets damaged. The, do you understand? I'll explain again. The spinal thalamic tract on the right takes it to the left. So if there is any damage on the left, it will affect the right side. Your left side spinal thalamic tract will only be affected if the lesion is on the right side. Do you understand? Yeah? Do not think about the same. I know you might think the tumor is here and if it comes like here, it's like on the same side. 
the tumor is here, the, you, know, there, you have two spinal thalamic tracts, right, which crosses over like this. Isn't it? We have two. I'm not, I'm not just talking about one side, I'm talking about the opposite side as well, okay, no? So, so you might think, yeah, it can damage this as well. Yeah, it will damage, but the, the clinical signs will look as though your opposite side is getting damaged. This is more pronounced. Understand? So if you have a lesion on the left side, the spinal thalamic tract will be affected on the right side. Why? Your right side is doing fine. Because you have no lesion on the right side. But it's not being able to go up after crossing over. So is there any point of this right side being normal? No. You will lose your sensation anyways. Do you understand? But the dorsal column is not like it. will only get damaged uh, on, on the opposite side of the medulla gets damaged. Otherwise, it's in the same side. Okay? So, spinal thalamic tract, maybe you understand it right, right now very nicely. If you don't, if you don't understand, you should tell. I don't mind explaining it anymore. Do you understand? Don't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> I explain it. Spinal thalamic tract, it originates, for example, I drew this tumor here because not all tumors originate solely on the left side. Okay? It's just an example. Okay? Spinal thalamic tract is not just on the right side. There is a spinal thalamic on the left side as well. Okay? But the tumor is damaging which side? Which side is the tumor on? Yeah. Left, on the side. left side. Okay. Your spinal thalamic tract comes the right one. I'm talking about the right one. Goes to the dorsal root ganglion. Goes into the right side. Crosses to the left side. Okay? Then goes up. So imagine, if there was any damage here, will it ever go up? So will, will there any sensation, will there be any sensation conducted? But from which side? Right side. That is why your opposite side is getting damaged. Do you understand? How do you understand? Yeah? So, um, so you are saying that um, depending on these factors are dependent on where the tumor is and at the level of their decusation. Yeah, the level of the decusation. If it was from the central area, your both sides would get damaged. Okay? Because Yeah, both of them cross. So you will lose pain and temperature on both sides. Do you understand? If there was something on this side, this side would get damaged. Because you should think of which is in if, if it was a, da, a lesion on the left side, your spinal thalamic tract on the left is already damaged. The only good one is what in the right side. Okay, so the right side is also not being able to go up. Yeah. So on the opposite side will get damaged. Uh, you will have loss of sensation of pain and temperature alone. Okay. If you have a lesion here, the left is fine. So left tries to cross over. But your left is also not being able to go up because of a damage on this side. Now, do you guys understand? This is very important because it will be very helpful.